Hey guys, welcome to the beginning of this adventure, man. We're in Kenya. Uh, there's a lot of things coming down the pipeline. We have a lot of people we're working with. We've made it, we're doing well. I'm very excited to share with you the things that are coming, but you're gonna have to wait. You gotta focus and be patient. In the meantime, I'm sharing with you a site tour with my partner, Thiongo, and we're in Limuru, right? Yep. Out here in Limuru, past some beautiful tea plantations. Um, very green up in the mountains is beautiful and this is a new site so this is showing right off the bat you don't even have to wait two three years this, this turnover of organic transformation of a property it's not that big of a deal uh, we can really diversify and, and cross cross over into that kind of growing system much easier than most people think and I'm just giving you guys a glimpse here at this farm uh, these people don't even live here they just have somebody come in and manage it a little bit. And they've got the whole thing growing on. We have a uh, vegetable garden up here, a monocrop waiting to be turned over, nursery, compost, composting system, water tower. We've got a centropic system going in and a conventional monocropped apple orchard in the very back just to uh, give some continuity to the owner and show that there is a real benefit to the system. So I'm gonna let Thiongo show you guys around and I'm really happy that you're joining me. And anybody tuning in uh, that is new here, welcome. Welcome basically to everybody. And we're happy to have you here. All right, where are we at? We at Nyambura Organic Farm in Lemuru, uh, Kiambu County, on the outskirts of Nairobi. All right, who are you? I'm Diogo Gashi, a permaculture designer and trainer. All right. We're out here changing the world. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Guge Diongo, the manager Nyambura Farm here at Lemuru. All right. So let's start at that end down there. You guys go ahead. All right, we got a before and after here. Uh, yeah, that, that's right. So we started on the left and on the right uh, we don't have much, something much going on. Uh, so, so we're looking at a one-till, low-till, mm -hmm. no-till eventually system, right? Yeah, that's right. So we started by tilling the land. Thereafter we are going to make beds and have our nursery here. Uh, on the beds we are going to have different vegetables planted. All right. We don't want to disturb the soil food web. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. Why don't you tell everybody who doesn't know why you don't want to hack up and terrorize the soil and turn it into dirt? Uh, one is that uh, we don't need uh, to break up the microorganisms, mostly the fungi that create the web, uh, the soil web. So by keeping it intact, by having minimal tillage, we don't disturb the microorganisms. Again, is that uh, you want to keep the carbon in, carbon in the, in the soil. So once you disturb, the carbon escapes to the soil. So we want to sequester that carbon to the soil. Again, by uh, tilling the soil continuously, you, you lose the nutrients, you lose the soil profile, so you mix up everything from the humus and the topsoil. Man, so we're getting our carbon back too? Yeah, yeah, we want to, cap uh, to capture the carbon from the air and back into the soil where it belongs to. I've heard that carbon is like a sponge that holds water. Yeah, so once you have the carbon to the, in, in the soil, you have, you, you have it as a sponge uh, holding your water and your nutrients. All right, so it doesn't need to be in the atmosphere? No, you need to capture it and uh, have it in the soil uh, so that we reduce on uh, climate change and global warming. This sounds like a free resource to me. Yeah, it's, it's pretty free. Uh, so instead of uh, investing to machinery that uh, uh, sequester your carbon, you've got your plants doing that for you. Okay, so now you've told us where we're at. Why don't you tell us about the objectives of this farming method? So we are here on the garden and uh, we started this project in November 2022. Uh, the objectives of the farm is first to grow organic uh, produce uh, for the community and for the market. Uh, secondly is to educate the community on uh, alternative methods of agriculture. The model we are applying here is permaculture design and centropic agroforestry principles. Uh, we are going to see what we have planted and the methods that we, have, we have planted. So at first uh, all this land was uh, bare. Uh, there was nothing growing, uh, so we came in and started making beds on contour. Uh, after we made the beds on contour, uh, we added uh, uh, some manure and uh, mixed it into the soil. 
uh, thereafter we came with different crops and we planted uh, every bed with different crops. All right, wait, so the beds are on contour. You don't want all these crops to just wash away? Uh, so the plan is that because the land is on a slope, uh, we, we plan that... Uh, sloping down that way, right? Yeah, sloping towards uh, the, the below. So this is the higher side and that's the lower side. So we're keeping the topsoil, we're keeping the nutrients. Yeah. We're keeping the moisture. Yeah. So, and uh, as you can see, the area currently is dry, but when it rains, it pours, so we've got uh, lots of rain. Uh, we're expecting that uh, when the rain starts, in an annual, yeah, the annual rainfall is about 1,500 millimeters, so that's heavy rain. So, by putting the beds on contour, we're planning that when it rains, there will be no erosion. So, we retain all that water into the beds and into the pads. Shout out to Bomanoma. Yeah. <laughs> Selena. Hey. Yeah, that's right. They're just, they are just our neighbors on the lower side. So they're on the lower lowlands where, they, where it's drier. And you, got, you have anything to say about Bomanoma? Uh, yeah, Bomanoma, they have a similar garden, but it's drier. Uh, dry, so, dry. Yeah, dry, dry. Prayers for you guys. Yeah. Uh, we hope the rains are coming over to you. So here you've got this stuff. Now, so this is straw or grass, so these we, we had to bring it uh, in on the farm, uh, we didn't have it. So these are what we are using for mulching, so this is just dry straw. So and we are using mulching to reduce evaporation, uh, covering the soil, keeping it cooler. And then over time it's going to decompose, there are some places that you can see uh, termites. So termites will be helping in breaking it down. Wait a minute, I've seen some people traveling around East Africa, they, they've had a chant. Yeah. What's, what's that chant about no bare soil? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we don't want to have our soil bare. Uh, we want it covered. No bare soil. Yeah, no bare soil. Rolling. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming for you. So we keep our soil covered uh, by using mulch or else you can use uh, cover crops. So for our case, we have used mulch, which is going to decompose and build our soil fertility. You have the soil covered and you have roots growing in it. It's moist and it has air. Yeah. That sounds like a recipe for life to me. <laughs> living soil gives living food. Living food gives life to the body. That's right. So when you guys started this, it was bare. I, I, we see some straw here, right? We've got some carbonaceous materials. What did you, what did you put on these beds to get the fertility going? Uh, so we started by doing a soil test. And in the soil test showed that uh, we have got uh, low carbon and low nitrogen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We did a soil test. Yeah. What soil lab did we use here? Uh, so we used a government la a soil lab. Uh, so we got our soil tested to get to understand our soil, mostly our soil pH. That's the acidity or like alkalinity of our soil. And then uh, we have uh, uh, the carbon, so you can know uh, does our soil have a lot of carbon or low carbon. So we found out it has low carbon. So that's why we are adding uh, the, the, the manure and lots of organic matter. All right. And then we also found out it has low nitrogen. So the things that we use are just manure. Uh, so we use good. Why don't you show us the manure? Let's talk about that. What is this stuff? So here we've got a, a heap of manure. So this is basically goat manure uh, from uh, Narok. So Narok is just uh, a few kilometers from here. And this goat manure, the, the, why we got goat manure is because we want uh, manure that's rich in nutrients. So we find that uh, these animals are free range, uh, so they graze in the grasslands of Narok. And then uh, the, 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 the manure is uh, it's close to well decomposed. So How just, long does that take? Close to three months. So you, you can compost it or you can just add water into it and then it naturally decomposes. And uh, you just have to take these and then mix it into the soil and then have your crops growing. So, so, so you got water, nitrogen, and carbon yeah. mixed it together. Yeah. And then you get this fertility, yeah. jump start the garden, yeah. then it builds its own fertility. Uh -huh, exactly. So it's a one time deal. Uh -huh, yeah. All right. What's growing on over here? Also, uh, uh, over here you've got a bed. So here we adopted the syntropic model. So this could be our tree line. And then here you've got different uh, crops growing. Here you've got sunflower. Let's take and a look. Let's take a look. Yeah, and uh, over here you've got a chameleon. <laughs> yeah. We've got a tiny chameleon over there. Where at? Yeah. 
Let's get that. Everybody wants to see the chameleon, I'm sure. Where's it at? Yeah, it is. Oh, oh man. <laughs> we made it to Africa, y'all. <laughs> Where's he going? So you can see biology is coming back. So chameleon is enjoying different pests. Hold on, let me get over here. So I could guess it's uh, enjoying some of the pests. So it's also helping us in pest control. Oh man, having a hard time getting to focus on that guy. <laughs> he keeps moving away. Where are you going? <laughs> so this thing's out here eating the pests, the bad guys that are messing with the plant. Yeah. We've attracted a beneficial predator. Mm -hmm. oh. right. Look at that. So we've got a stratified layer here. We've got some life going on, beneficial life. Yeah. So below the sunflower, so we're expecting that uh, once mature, the sunflower could uh, uh, reach to two meters. And then below the sunflower, you've got gooseberry. So gooseberry is a, it's a habitious, it's on the habitious layer. It okay. gets to uh, about uh, that centimeters tall and uh, about that, uh, that centimeters wide. So the sunflower is going to grow first and then the gooseberry is going to replace it. Yeah, exactly. And then they are occupying different uh, vertical spaces so okay. they don't compete for sunlight. And then uh, on the sides of the gooseberry you've got uh, beans. So beans once uh, they are nitrogen fixers. And then they are fast maturing, so you can see they are already flowering. So in the next one month, they're going to have green beans. So after a month, we can remove them from the system. So walk us through that real quick. Yeah. We got sunflowers, yeah. gooseberries, yeah. peas, uh, beans. Beans. Yeah. Sunflower, gooseberries, and they're all in the same spot. Yeah, same spot. So these guys have different root systems. Yeah in different vertical occupation yeah. above different, the soil. And different maturity rates. And, and that helps them to cooperate instead of compete, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, you're going to have, you're going to see that they're going to have different maturity, maturity rates. Uh, the beans maturing fast and uh, uh, going out from the system. And uh, next in, you're going to have a sunflower and then uh, the sunflower will mature and leave your uh, uh, gooseberry growing. And Show then, us the gooseberry. Where's uh, that? Here's at? a gooseberry. Oh man, those things are good. Yeah, it has also tiny flowers and fruits. So take a look at this from a few feet back. It's like a little miniature forest, right? Yeah, it's, it's got different layers. Uh, it's a mini forest uh, having different layers and different crops and also different maturity rates. So these are uh, different eco ecological succession. All right. Let's see, let's see what else we got. Yeah, so again, next to the beans, you've got maize. So okay. here you are trying to mimic the three sisters, whereby you've got your maize growing tall, and then you have been going around it. And then uh, since maize is a heavy feeder, you're going to have uh, beans that are fixing nitrogen, and uh, the maize will be enjoying that nitrogen below it on, on the root system. Then closer, closer to it, uh, we have a uh, sage, uh, which is uh, right here. So again, sage is sl slower growing. So once the maize uh, is harvested, the sage will expand. So you're going to see that they are occupying different spaces, and also they serve different roles. So you're going to have a, your, your, your sage for herbs, your beans for either you are doing your green beans, and your maize and other fruits. In the same bed, occupying the same space. So in here you have a future nursery and it's just uh, wooden poles and uh, pieces of shed net. So the shed net is to block sunlight uh, because young seedlings don't require that much uh, sunlight. So we are going to block the sunlight uh, by using shed net. And then inside we are going to have uh, shelves we are going to place our different seed trays. Then in, in the seed trays that's where you are going to have our different seeds growing. Uh, once we take care of the young seedlings, uh, they'll be ready uh, to go into the farm. So this is just an ongoing project, so we'll, we are going to have it in the future, so we'll be preparing 
the seed tray so that when the rainy, the rainy season comes, which is in the next two months, uh, we are expecting the March April rain. So we'll be uh, working on this in, the, in these months, January and February, so that in March we have got lots of seedlings ready to transplant in the main garden. What about that heirloom organic seed genetic diversity? Yeah, so in here you're going to have different seed types as we have seen in the garden. So it all starts here. So we have, we'll be collecting different seeds, local seeds, local indigenous seeds, heirloom seeds. And uh, hey, hey, wait a minute, why don't we need GMO seeds in uh, a centropic system? No, we don't need Why GMO don't we need seeds? them? Uh, because one is GMO, they're not natural, uh, so they're made in the labs. Uh, secondary is that uh, they're not made locally, so you have to import them, they're expensive. Also, they need expensive inputs such as fertilizers and pesticides. So we have our own indigenous. We're, we're not we're not using any fertilizers or pesticides, are we? No, not at all. We do, in our systems, we don't use in the synthetics, be it fertilizer or be it pesticides. So, so if we're not using pesticides, then we don't need a GMO seed to live through pesticides. Yeah, we, we don't need it at all. We have got our own resilient seeds that are strong and healthy, and they are feeding our populations. There's an immune system. Yeah. There's an immune system out there. And when the bugs kill a plant, that's like our body killing a cancer cell. When the bugs go after these bad things, they're taking out the unhealthy population that's not feeding the soil. They make room for more life. When you work with nature, you don't have to have these industrial workarounds that end up just degrading the soil. That's why we're doing this, because we want to build living, developing soil that gets better every year. When you have an industrial system, you're taking. Eventually, there's going to be nothing left to take. There's going to be no water. You have to design better. All right, so guys, how long do you think this has been going on? Six months, a year? Uh-uh. They got this in two months. Two months. From this over here, to building soil and growing food over here and sequestering carbon and holding water. You can imagine these uh, two months old. Uh, so we started uh, in November. There was basically nothing. It was uh, uh, just weeds. We thrust, uh, we slashed the weeds and started from scratch. So we started by experimenting with different uh, crops, about 20 varieties, and that's what you'll see growing. And then we stratified them in different layers uh, because they have got different sunlight needs, and also they have, the plants have different uh, nutrient needs. So we combined plants that are friendly to each other and uh, they occupy different uh, spaces and you also note that uh, they mature in different rates so you find that uh, two months later uh, we have got our vegetables uh, the likes of uh, skumawiki kale and spinach that are ready for picking in the next one month you're going to have others such as uh, uh, gooseberry that will be ready and then uh, thereafter you've got your sunflower and your maize so you're, you're not just growing maize out here this is not a monocrop yeah. We have an abundance of diversity. <laughs> you guys got a lot of food coming. Yeah. Uh, so, so you find that uh, in, in such a system, you're going to have like mandri harvest of different crops uh, compared to if you had to just grow one crop, for example, maize, and you have to wait for uh, six months. Th then you have a lot of food to throw away all at one time, right? Yeah. Yeah. All and right. Then, so you're saying this was in November, and this is not your land. This is somebody yeah, that had you come out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a client's uh, piece of land. Piece of cake. You just harmonized with the natural ecosystem with Mother Nature. Yeah. And God uh, created this earth to be abundant and He wanted us to be abundant. Yeah. And look what, what we got. You just have to pay attention. You just have to pay attention and ask the right questions. Change your way of thinking. Wait a minute, what have we got going on here on the shirt? You got your own shirt, Theongo? Yeah, I've got my own t-shirt. So. What? <laughs> So the logo is my own consultancy company. It's called African Regenerative Solutions. You do this for work? Yeah, I do this for work. Man. Um, yeah. So we're out here, people can actually reach out to us? Yeah, they can actually reach out to us through our social media platforms and also on our website. All right. What's that information? So these are African Regenerative Solutions. You can use the same name to follow us. Woo! We got a mountain breeze up in here. Yeah, welcome to the agroforestry section. So we are on the lower side of the farm. Uh, on my left, you have got an apple orchard. So here we have planted uh, young apple seedlings. 
So here the client wanted to see the conventional system of just a monocrop of apples and then on the my right is where I'm going to show you the centropic agroforestry system. Hey let me take a look at one of those apples real quick. What have we got here? Man, it's not looking so good. Let's see this one. All right, all right. So tell us about starting apples in an open field that's just been tilled. So uh, over here, this field, uh, there was a lot of shrubs, so they were cleared out, and then just apples were planted on the whole, so there's nothing else growing apart from apples. So they're having it uh, rough uh, with the hot sun, with the blowing wind, so you can see they're not doing really well. And then uh, we're going to compare this side by side uh, with the other centropic system. Yeah, you guys. You can't hear it because I have the muff on, but the wind out here is no joke. This view, this view is beautiful, but the wind comes straight up the hill. <laughs> yeah, so obviously that gives us a sign of putting up more wind breaks, planting more trees so that you can slow down the wind. Uh, so that. Uh, Why do you want to slow down the wind? Uh, one is uh, crops don't like uh, when the wind is strong on them. You lose a lot of moisture and then they also bend over. So they are not really happy having blown on the sides. So not only are we trying to slow down, soak, and spread the water, we're trying to keep it in the trees as well yeah. from evaporating from the sun and wind. Yeah. That's where the canopy comes in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why you need different uh, layers so you can slow down the wind, you can keep in your moisture. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, yeah let's take a look here. Demonstrate with this one. So... Uh, welcome to the uh, Centropia Agroforest System. Uh, this was recently established in uh, December, so with the beginning of the dry season. Uh, what we had here previously is a fruit orchard. Wait, wait, wait. Not even two months. This is one month, right? Yeah, this is one month. Okay. So this was planted in December. Now, now from what I'm seeing here, there's not as many plants as what I'm used to. Yeah. So they, they didn't plant the whole system together? Yeah, so what we have here is just fruit trees planted on, on one bed. Normally we have a system of five beds. So that's why you can see this gap uh, whereby you're going to have three additional beds uh, okay. where we plant uh, grass line. So we've got no, su no support species and no grass for biomass yet, yeah. right? But we've got the fruit trees in? Yeah. Okay, so not, ev not every case has the budget, right, mm -hmm. to fully go in. So we're balling on a budget here a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but what would happen if they had the support species and the full system, the placenta in, and the biomass, the Mombasa grass, what would happen if all that was in? Yeah. So I think here we're struggling with our budget, with a limited budget, and also with limited water. So what the client has is only enough to feed the, uh, the few fr fruit trees. So we planted 100 fruit trees. So these are getting watered. And the plan is when the rainy season comes, we set up the other three beds and then uh, the rainwater will irrigate everything. But then, even though we're on a budget, we're still doing something, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah we're still moving forward. Yeah. We're not, we're not going to let that stop us. Yeah. All right, so we're at the bottom of the hill, right? Yeah, we are at the edge of the farm. Uh, right here is the fence. So this was also recently put up in December, so also a month old. So we put up these uh, as a form of security. To keep away, there's a lot of livestock from our neighbors. And there's wildlife, you've got antelopes and hares who are coming in and uh, destroying our crops, and also people from uh, just moving uh, up and down on the farm. So, in, in the right next to the fence, we are going to part, put a hedge, a living hedge, a living fence, so that one we can block uh, that strong wind and also create a habitat for uh, different organisms so that we have different organisms because you can see these most tree uh, uh, having less vegetation so you want to have a, a row of vegetation where we can have so, so you're going to be slowing down the wind yeah bringing in uh beneficial what 
beneficial uh, organism so you could have birds coming in you could have your Eco okay so we're, we're looking for the ecology here yeah the ecology so we create a habitat for them we have a, a source of food for them so we have different uh, plants growing on the hedge got it and then Ma maybe get... maybe some wild edibles yeah and also a habitat a micro habitat for them and you said we've got some grass here right yeah so here we've got uh, napier grass so napier grass locally is used as fodder it's also fast growing so uh, first before we have our trees growing we have going to have these as a as a windbreak and then since we don't have lots of uh, carbon we are going to use the uh, napier as our source of carbon so for our mulch we're going just to chop it and apply it on the soil the other good thing with the napier is that it's a fast growing grass and once you chop it it's going to uh, come right up all right so we've got biomass man yeah we're slowing the water down so it doesn't flood the neighbors yeah. We're doing a lot of stuff on this hedge. You thought it was a fence, but it's a whole ecosystem on the edge of the property here. Exactly. And this is what it looks like to begin with. Hey, you said they were going to do like a museum or something here, right? Yeah, that's the plan so that we can open up the project to the community and to the rest of the world. To okay. Showcase on uh, sustainable gr uh, growing of food, All sustainable right. living. Yeah, so we've got future plans. Beautiful. Asante sana Kenya. Asante Thiongo. Koheri. <laughs> Guys, you have been rock stars today. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Koheri. Bye. All right, last thing I want to say is thank you, Thiongo. Asante sana, my friend. Karibu sana. So, we're really excited about what we're doing together. Yeah, so this is the beginning and uh, this is our first project that we are visiting and uh, we'll be working on many more in the coming future. Yeah. So as a country, like right now, uh, about 4.2 million Kenyans are starving. About 22 counties are uh, experiencing the worst drought in 40 years. So we are hoping that what we are doing and what we are showing with the world, that through regenerative agriculture, you can regenerate the soil, you can uh, create ecosystems that are feeding people cheaply with the local resources. So uh, our partnership is uh, uh, helping farmers start up such gardens and also sharing this information with the world so that uh, other people in, in the country and uh, above the country can uh, get this knowledge and start practicing in your back, in your back doors, in any space that you find, you can implement what we are showing you here. At any scale. Yeah, at any scale. At any scale. Yeah, yeah and, it, and it's a hope and proven science. Yeah. We know that it holds water in the soil. Yeah. That's what carbon does. It's like putting money in the bank. Yeah. You, you get interest off of it. It grows itself once you get enough. Yeah. And once you hit a certain peak, you've got your own wealth always generating in the soil. That's why a forest can grow itself without anybody having to fertilize it. Using these principles, we can adapt them to agriculture and adapt our farming methods with a little bit of patience and a little bit of education to learn how to harmonize with these systems, get our carbon drawdown, hold the water in the soil, regenerate the water tables, reverse the droughts, stabilize the floods. What else? That's a lot of good stuff, but what else can we do? And also have clean food for our people. Clean food, yeah. Nutritious food for our people. What are they? Sumu, right? They call yeah, it sumu? Yeah, they call it sumu. But, uh, they call it dawa, but it's sumu. Yeah. So what you spray on your crops is not dawa, it's a lot of poison. So stop using that. There are cheaper alternatives. You don't have even to use the pesticides. You can grow your, your grow yourself, uh, grow your crops in healthy soil and get all the nutrients that you need in your body. That's right, and they're, and they're better than ever because when you get it fresh, the living enzymes, yeah. the nutrient density in the food. Yeah. Actually, when maize is in healthy soil, it genetically expresses itself differently. Did you know that? The sugars inside the maize are a more complex sugar for the body to break down and it produces more ears of corn. Yeah. When it's in a, in a healthy soil, a natural soil for it to grow in, it has simple sugars. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, we have, there's so much for us to learn in the regenerative science of agriculture. Yeah. It's, it's untapped. Yeah. What's below our feet, we're just learning about. We know more about space sometimes than the soil. <laughs> so we're studying this, studying what's really going to help people, what's really going to meet the UN's SDGs by 2030. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. Sawa sawa. Yeah. All right. Thank you.